Now let's consider the 17th century British writer Nicholas Barbon. It's believed he was born in the neighborhood of 1640, and he led quite an important life in London. He was one of the founders of modern fire insurance, he worked as a physician, and he was important as a builder, helping to rebuild London after the Great Fire of 1666. By the way, his actual full name is this, Nicholas, if Jesus Christ had not died for thee, thou hadst been damned, barebone, but for short they called him Nicholas Barbon. Most generally, he was one of a number of pamphleteers writing in mid to late 17th century London who laid some of the basic foundations for economic science and also gave a start that Adam Smith could later build upon. You also can think of Barbin as a transitional figure from mercantilism to free trade. He had the mercantilist elements of being very worried about nation building and whether Great Britain would be a stronger nation than its competitors. At the same time, he understood how free trade and market exchange could contribute to this process of nation-building. Some of Barbin's key doctrines were populationism, namely he wanted a nation to have a large and growing number of people. He quite strongly believed that trade makes a nation and also the military for that nation stronger. There's an interesting analysis in his works of how you need trade to bring in military materials to fight a war better, and that was part of his case for freer trade. Perhaps most importantly, he defended the economic role of cities and also building in cities as being of prime economic and macroeconomic importance. In Barbin's work, you get an early sense of the idea of increasing returns, that when you bring a lot of people together in cities and they try to emulate each other or learn from each other or compete against each other, that that's more productive than having a population scattered around in smaller numbers in a lot of different places. Overall, Barbin is also important because in him you can see the beginnings of a macroeconomic perspective on economic reasoning, just a general sense of how microeconomics and macroeconomics fit together and how people, by pursuing trade and also free trade across borders, that they build up prosperity in a more general, more macro way. You can think of Barbin in some very rudimentary ways as having an early understanding of what later came to be called invisible hand mechanisms. It's not quite right to call Barbin a great economist or even an economist at all. He was a writer and a figure of his time, and he covered some economic issues. His works are pretty short, they're interesting to read, and they're fairly readable. One of them is available for free online. That's called A Discourse on Trade. Probably his most important work is An Apology for the Builder, which can be ordered in paperback. And that's where he talks about real estate and increasing returns and the economic role of cities, as we would now refer to those concepts. Above all, when you read Bar Barbin, what you really can see is that in mid to late 17th century England, an economic perspective on the world really is starting to take form.